Hey everyone, I'm Dylan with On One, and in this video, we're going to be diving into some more topics using Pano inside of On One Photo Raw 2018. We're going to be going over some more advanced editing techniques, as well as some creative ways to use effects on your panorama. So let's get started. To begin creating our panorama, we first need to create a set of panoramic photos. I like to shoot my panoramas vertically because it raises the height of my frame when panning across the scene. Remember to use a tripod when shooting a panorama, as well as to keep your focus on manual. This is so that your camera is steady for each of the shots, and you want your focus range to be the exact same in each photo. So now that I have my vertically shot photos here, what I need to do next is I need to create a consistent look across the entire series of photos. I do this because I want the photos to have consistent exposures and colors, so that when they are stitched together, there's a natural tone and color to the panoramic photo. It's also good to make sure your photos have lens correction, so that your panorama looks more natural and not like a super wide angle lens took it. So let's grab our first photo and go into develop. Here in develop, we're just going to give our photo a nice tone and color adjustment just to make sure everything in the photo is exposed the way we want it. So to start with setting our tone, I'm going to turn up the exposure just a tad to give my photo back a little more brightness. I like to give most of my photos some contrast just to add a little bit of pop to them. My highlights are also a little too bright for my like, so I'm going to turn them down a tad. My midtones look fine, but I do want to raise my shadows quite a bit, and that's going to add a lot of detail back into my rock here. My whites could be turned down just a tad. That looks good right there. For the black slider, per usual, I'm going to hold down my J key, which is going to show me any clipping warning for the blacks and whites. I'm going to pull them back to add some true black. That looks good right about there. Remember, a little bit goes a long way with the black slider, so just make sure you hold down your J key to see all the true black that you're adding into your photo. Now what I want to do is I just want to warm up my photo a bit here. That looks good. And last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my lens correction is turned on and the profile that it is using is correct. Okay, everything looks good there. Now what I need to do is I need to apply these settings to all of my photos in that series. So I'm going to head back into browse where my subfolder is. I'm going to make sure that the photo is selected that I just developed. I'm going to go to settings and then I'm going to select copy settings, or you can press shift command C on your keyboard. Now just make sure all of your photos are selected and to paste the settings, simply hit shift command V on your keyboard, or you can go back to the settings and select paste settings. Now that we have all our photos together with a good consistent tone, we can now take our photos to be merged together into a panorama. Make sure that all of your photos are selected and head over to the panel icon on the right side. You'll notice that in Pano, you have a preview of your photo as well as a panorama options pane on the right side. The option pane is where you are going to tell Photo Raw how to create your panoramic photo. The type control refers to how you want your photo aligned and merged together. I typically use auto, which most of the time is going to be using spherical. Spherical type means that to create your panorama, Photo Raw is going to align your images together as if they were in a sphere. Think of it as your typical 360 degree panoramic photo. Spherical would be used when you were panning your camera from a set location or a tripod to capture the photos. Whereas collage would be if you took a photo at a spot and say you walked two feet to the right, took another photo, so on and so forth. Say maybe you wanted to capture a long piece of art or maybe a, a big wall of graffiti or something like that. That would be good for collage. Let's use auto for this photo because it was taken while I was panning with a tripod. The next control is edges. Not all of the photos are going to merge together perfectly and there's going to be some excess information left over. You can see that if we have the none option selected, that there's a lot of excess information that didn't get merged together within the panorama. Crop means that Photo Raw is going to crop your photo to fill the edges. Warp to fill is going to be using content aware tools to fill your edges. I like to use crop most of the time, but warp to fill works great too. It all depends on what you want your panoramic photo to look like. Now the size of the pano depends on how large you want this thing to be. You can have a giant panoramic photo if say you're going to print it or maybe you're going to be using that photo commercially and they need a huge file size. Whatever the case may be, for this photo I'm going to simply select 50% so that it doesn't make an enormous panorama on my hard drive. I also want my panorama to open up and develop so I can immediately start editing and making adjustments to it. Now that we have all our output controls set, we can go ahead and click save. Keep in mind when merging panoramas that the more photos you have to merge together, the longer it's going to take when you're creating your panorama. So now that we are in develop, I see that there's quite a bit going on in my photo. I don't really like all of these people in the scene, so I'm going to clone them out. 
I'm going to go over to my clone stamp tool, or you can grab it by hitting S on your keyboard. I'm going to make sure my brush size is 100% opacity and about 50, 60 for the feathering. Don't have to be precise, that looks good. So a pro tip when using the clone stamp tool is to use the lines, whatever they may be in your photo, to your advantage. Hold down option on your keyboard to select the area that you want to use as your clone and just follow that line and you can clone him out just like that. Now for all the perfectionist people out there, I'm actually going to make you really happy and I'm going to clone out all of these people on the beach. I'm not going to make you watch that, so I'll be back in a sec when I've finished. Okay, so it looks like we've got all of the people and objects out of our photo. Besides the clone stamp tool, I also use the magic eraser tool. It's a very powerful content and wear tool that erases smudges or dust or even objects out of your photo. Now what I wanna do is I just wanna crop my photo and I wanna tighten up the frame a bit. Holding down my shift key, I'm going to find a good spot to crop. Okay, that looks good there. Also, since I'm in the crop area, I'm going to grab the straightening tool and make sure my photo is straight. Just select the straightening tool here and drag it across the horizon line and now our photo is straight. So now what I want to do is I want to set my basic tone again now that I have all of my photos together into a panorama. We already corrected our photos exposure and color earlier, so I only really want to up my shadows a bit just to give some detail back into that rock. So I'm going to pull up the shadows about there. That looks good. Now when I was shooting the shot, I remember that there was quite a bit of light hitting the rock here and it's not really showing that. So to fix that, I'm simply going to go to my local adjustments and inside my adjustment layer, I'm going to boost the shadows a bit. I'm going to make sure I have my masking brush selected by hitting B on my keyboard. And I'm going to make sure I have paint in selected. You can do this by hitting X on your keyboard. Notice how if you hit X, it will make it plus or minus depending on what you want. Plus means paint in and minus means paint out. Okay, so now I'm just going to paint in some light onto my rock. Now I want to head into effects to add some creative filters to my photo. The first thing I want to do to my photo in effects is I want to add some dynamic contrast to my rock here, just to make it pop out a bit more from the background. So I'm going to go to add a filter and select dynamic contrast. By adding the dynamic contrast filter, you're automatically going to apply that filter to the entire photo. I only want it on the rock, so I'm going to go to the masking options. I'm going to select invert. This is going to make my mask black, which is going to conceal the entire mask. Now I want to paint in the mask to the areas of my rock that need contrast. I'm going to select my masking brush again or hit B on my keyboard and I'm going to make sure it's set to paint in and I'm going to go in and paint in some contrast to my rock here. A pro tip here when painting in dynamic contrast is that sometimes it can dole up your colors a little bit when you're going in and brushing in the contrast. So a good tip to do is go down to your vibrance option on your dynamic contrast and turn that up a bit. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase the colors of the area that you painted in. That looks a lot more natural like that. I'm gonna leave it how it is. Now what I wanna do is I wanna adjust the sky to give it some color. I want to make it seem as if it was more of like a sunset time rather than at the middle of the day when I was shooting it. So to do that, I'm going to add a filter and I'm going to add the photo filter. The photo filter is basically going to emulate a filter on your camera lens when you shot the photo. I'm going to use the 85 style. I only want to apply this mask strictly to my sky, so I'm going to select luminosity. Once I've added the mask, you'll notice that if I select view, the luminosity mask is applying the mask to the brighter areas in my photo, which is pretty much the sky. I can see now that some of the mask is still being applied to some areas on my foreground. So I'm just going to use my level slider and just get the mask sort of more of where I want it. Now to fine tune the sky look, I'm going to go down and I'm going to adjust my saturation quite a bit, just so I can see where it's at within the sky. That seems a little bit extreme, but now what we can do is we can go down and we can turn down the amount so it's not so hot. Okay, that looks good right about there. Now what I want to do is I want to select clean highlights in the mode options. What that is going to do is it's going to keep my highlights pure and not oversaturate them with the color or the filter. By turning the filter on and off, you can see that the filter really livened up our sky. Now I don't want this photo filter on my sand, so I'm just going to view my mask, I'm going to select my masking brush, and I'm going to brush out the area on my sand where I don't want the filter to be applied. Now 
our photo is actually looking really great so far. There's only a couple other things I want to do. And one of those things is I want to sort of subdue the sand in the foreground. It seems a little bright and a little distracting. So I'm going to go to my local adjustments. I'm going to go to add new and rather than going to darken, I'm actually going to reset the layer and I'm going to head down to paint with color. I'm going to select black as my color and I'm going to paint the black over the sand. Now I know this looks crazy, but if you go to your layer, you can turn down the opacity to make it look more realistic. Okay, that looks good right about there. I just want to darken it a bit. And I also didn't want to turn down the exposure because sometimes that can mess with the highlight detail and the shadow detail. And I really only wanted it to be just basically just dark. That looks good. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to add a slight vignette just to draw the viewers to my rock. So I'm going to go to add filter and I'm going to go to vignette. And rather than clicking big softy, which I usually select all of the time, I'm actually going to select subtle. Using the centering tool, I'm going to drag where I want my subject to pop. That looks good. Nothing too crazy, just a subtle vignette. Maybe turn down the brightness just a little bit to see where it's at. You can always turn it up later. Okay, that looks like a great finishing touch to our photo. You can see by hitting the preview button or by hitting backslash on your keyboard, you can see that we really made our panoramic photo pop. Those are some advanced options in Pano as well as some creative panoramic editing techniques. I'm Dylan with On1 and thank you for watching.